vast, extreme, wild, and vital. This is the Yukon Flats National Wildlife Refuge, a land sculpted by water, fire, and ice, encompassing more than 11 million acres of wetlands, river floodplains, and forested lowlands. Straddling the Arctic Circle, the refuge lies in a vast wetland basin formed over the millennia by water and scouring ice moving down the constantly changing Yukon River. Bordered by the Brooks Range to the north and the White Mountains to the south, ten major tributaries flow through an expansive floodplain before discharging into the Yukon River. Periodic flooding and frequent lightning-caused fires have shaped an elaborate mosaic of vegetation types across the basin. This mix provides excellent habitat for an abundance of wildlife species. Here, the drama of nature is played out every day in a natural and virtually undisturbed ecosystem. Before the Yukon River ice moves out each May, millions of migrating birds from four continents start to converge on the Yukon Flats. More than 150 bird species have been identified on the Yukon Flats. Most are migratory, but 13 species are known to reside on the refuge year-round. Of national and international significance are the waterfowl. Surveys have established the Yukon Flats as one of the greatest waterfowl breeding areas in North America. Ducks reared on the Yukon Flats have been recovered throughout the United States and 11 foreign countries, making them truly a shared resource. Each year, the refuge hosts more than a million breeding ducks, including American Widgeon, Lesser Scop, Mallard, White-Winged Scoter, and canvasback ducks. Over half of Alaska's breeding population of canvasbacks nest on the Yukon Flats. And the ducks are not alone. Many other waterfowl and water birds also breed here, including swans, geese, loons, and grebes. The Yukon Flats provides vital habitat for these birds. These breeding grounds become even more critical when drought hits the Great Plains far to the south, forcing birds to fly northward and breed in areas with ample water such as the Yukon Flats. The refuge also provides habitat for many other animals, ranging from tiny invertebrates and frogs to bears and huge moose. Black bears are abundant and live in the forested lowlands, while grizzlies, which are less common, range throughout the refuge. Moose feed on aquatic vegetation in the ponds and marshes. During winter, they concentrate in stands of willow, birch, spruce, and poplar located in burns and along major rivers. The rivers, lakes, and ponds of the Yukon Flats also provide important fish rearing habitat. Three species of salmon migrate through the refuge en route from the Bering Sea to spawning areas in Alaska and Canada. This journey of up to 2,000 miles is the longest of any salmon in the world. Fifteen other species of fish, including she fish, northern pike, arctic grayling, and whitefish, also live in the waters of the Yukon Flats. The Yukon Flats Refuge is part of the National Wildlife Refuge System created by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1903. It is one of over 540 National Wildlife Refuges in the United States, totaling more than 94 million acres, 
Our National Wildlife Refuge System is the world's largest network of federal lands and waters dedicated to conserving fish, wildlife, and their habitats. The refuge was added to the National Wildlife Refuge System in 1978. It is the third largest refuge in the country, covering an area larger than many northeastern states. While wild and remote, the Yukon Flats has a long history of human use and visitation. Archaeological evidence suggests that prehistoric hunters from Siberia passed this way more than 10,000 years ago. Gwich'in and Koyakon Athabascan people have lived and hunted on the Yukon Flats for generations. Today, seven villages lie within or adjacent to the refuge. Many local residents continue to lead a subsistence lifestyle through hunting, trapping, and fishing within the refuge. I think the refuge is important um, in cooperating with our people to respect traditional use areas. We have a lot of respect for the land and the animals and I think that Native people have lived in harmony with uh, our environment for many, many years. I'm at peace with the world here and uh, I live off the land. My ancestral people had lived on this land and, and uh, they trapped on it and they caught their fish, their caribou, their moose, everything from this land. So it's been very good to us throughout the years. The fur trade first lured people of European descent into the Yukon Flats. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, the area was a hub for fur trading and a popular destination of the gold rush. Fort Yukon, currently the largest village within the refuge, was established in the 1840s by the Hudson Bay Trading Company. Today, visitors to the Yukon Flats National Wildlife Refuge can enjoy a variety of recreational activities. With no roads or developed trails, access within the refuge is primarily by river during the summer months and by travel across the frozen landscape during the winter. It's hard to imagine a world without wild places, without wildlife. Even here in Alaska, the Yukon Flats have been threatened by development. An immense hydroelectric dam project was planned in the 1960s that would have flooded 10,500 square miles of the Yukon Flats, an area larger than Lake Erie. Now, as a national wildlife refuge, this vast, extreme, wild, and vital area will continue to host nature's drama for generations to come.